Hello everyone, this is an introduction to non-right angle triangles and using trigonometry, not like Sokotoa, a different type of trigonometry to work out missing sides and angles on a non-right angle triangle. You will have to pause the video and make notes as we go along. Okay, there's a few examples uh, to write down in your books before you get on with some yourself. Okay, so non-right angle triangles and what I've got is a diagram there of a non-right angle triangle. Okay, because Pythagoras and Sokotoa, they only work when a triangle has got right angle. And you'll notice that we've got a new way of labeling this then with uh, A, B and C, where capital letters represent angles, corners of the shape, and lowercase letters represent the sides. And what you'll notice is that capital A is opposite little a. So capital A is down in the bottom left, and little a, lowercase a, is over on the right. Capital C, angle C is at the top, whereas lowercase c is at the bottom. And then, finally, capital B is in the bottom right, and lowercase b is over on the left-hand side. So they're always opposite to each other, and that's quite important. Okay. Now, the easiest part of non right angle triangles is probably using what's called the sine rule. Okay, which uses the sine button on your calculator. And it's given to you in the exam, so you haven't got to memorize it uh, this way around anyway. So I'm going to memorize it, but this is what the sine rule is. It makes fractions out of your sort of your pairs. So little a over sine capital A equals little b over sine big B, which is equal to little c over sine big C. And you'll never need to use all three of those for a question, but you use any two of them and you've got the option for which two you want to be. So some questions might have use A's and B's. Some question you might just use B and C. Other questions you might use A and C, but you'll never need all three, okay? And the way the sign rule works is that if you've got a complete pair, so if you know the size of angle A and you know how long little a is, you can use the sign rule because you've got a complete pair and you'll also need a part of another pair. Now, which part? That changes from question to question. But what you definitely need to use the sign rule is either both of those, okay, or you need both of those, or you need both of those. So you have to have one complete pair, otherwise you can't use the sign rule. Okay, And it's easy enough once you get your head around the formula and where to put the numbers, because it's just sort of moving couple of bits around and chucking it into a calculator. Okay, so pause the video at any stage if you need to make notes and we'll go on to some examples. Okay, so our first example then, and I've already labelled it then, I've got capital A and little a and I know both of those and I know capital B and I would like to work out little b. Okay, so I'm only going to be using the first two parts of the sign rule. I'm not interested in capital C and little c. And in an exam, you can label them whatever you like anyway. Okay. So if I put in the numbers into the formula, so little a is 6 and big A is 32. So sine 32 because it's the sign rule. And that's equal to, and then I put my sort of my half pair if you like. So I don't know what little b is, so I'll just put little b for now. But I do know that the angle, capital B, is 73. And what we're trying to work out is this little b here. Okay. Now, as with equations and changing the subject, if I want to work out little b, then little b needs to be on its own. Okay, It needs to be the subject of the formula. And the easiest way to do that is to bring this sine 73 all up in one go. And because it was on the bottom of a fraction dividing to start with, now it becomes a multiplication to be swapped sides. So what you end up with is sine 73, and on your calculator that'll have brackets around it, times, and you'll need to use the fraction key here as well, 6 over sine, and that's in brackets. Make sure you close that bracket, otherwise the calculator won't like you. And that should equal little b. Okay. So if you type all of that into your calculator on the left-hand side, sine 73 times, then make a, bra a fraction 6 over sine 32, what you should get is 10.83.
So the missing side of our triangle, little b, is 10.83 centimetres long. Okay. And the sign rule is pretty repetitive. If we have another look, a look at a different one then. I'll leave that one in so you can see the similarities. Okay, this time it's not labelled. So I'm going to call that uh, capital B and little b. And just for a change, I'll call that big C and little c. Okay. So uh, putting numbers into the formula. It doesn't really matter which way around you do it. So let's do and we'll, little b over sine of big B is equal to little c over sine of big C. So that is x over sine 38 is equal to 7 over sine 64. Okay, it's very similar to last time. There are two fractions. There's four parts all together in those fractions, and three of them we know. The one which we don't know, the one we're working out, is x. I want x to be on its own. So, very similar to last time, that sine 38 underneath comes to the other side. It was dividing, so it changes to a multiply. So, x equals 7 over sine 64 times sine 38. And if you put that into your calculator, being careful with brackets, you should get 4.79 centimetres. Okay. The actual maths you do is exactly the same every time, as long as you get the right numbers in the right places. Okay. So one more, and if you want to pause the video and have a go at this one before me, by all means you can do that. Okay. Right, let's label our side. So we'll go for capital A and little a capital B and little b. Okay. Uh, I've got a whole pair, so my whole pair is 6.5 over sine 71, because they're opposite to each other, b and little v, is equal to x over sine 18. They make a pair because they're opposite to each other. I want x to be on its own. So sine 18 needs to move can't stay where it is, comes to this side, and into your calculators then, sine 18 times 6.5 over sine 71. And if you type that into your calculator, it's easy enough, you should get 2.12 centimetres, which looks about right, because it is quite a short side compared to the other two. Okay, So that's how you use the sine rule to find a missing side. How would you find a missing angle then? Okay, if you try using the sine rule um, like we did just now for this question, so I would have 8 over sine 64, that's my pair of b's, I don't know why that says c, it's changed that to a b, equals 5 over sine, and we've got our missing angle, I call it theta, you can call it x if you like, sine theta. Now, the problem we've got on this question is that the thing we're working out, theta, the missing angle, is on the bottom of a fraction, and that's going to make our rearranging quite tricky. So we've got a little trick. If you're finding an angle, it's much easier to have the angles on the top. So we can turn the sine rule upside down when we're finding an angle. So sine A over A is equal to sine b over b, which is equal to sine c over c. And now it works in exactly the same way. Okay, now putting numbers in, we get sine theta on the top, which is much better, over 5, is equal to sine 64, this is my pair of b's, over 8. Sine theta, well theta really, but it's sine theta for now, we'll deal with that at the end. Sine theta is what we want on its own. So we're going to move the 5 over this time to a times 5. And what we get is that sine theta is equal to sine 64 over 8 times 5. Now that comes out as 0 0.561 with some numbers after it. Okay, leave it on your screen. I'm not trying to find sine theta, I'm trying to find 
beta, if you remember back to when we did Sokotoa, to get rid of sine from there, you need to do the opposite of sine, the inverse. The inverse of sine is sine to the minus 1. So sine minus 1, it's the 0 0.561 number, but on your calculators, you could just use the answer key. And you should get an angle of 34.18 degrees. Okay, so big difference is when you find an angle, you've got to flip the sine rule upside down. You still put in your numbers, your pairs, into fractions. You still move the denominator over, but you also have to do sine minus 1 at the end. Okay, let's have a look at another one. If I label it then, we'll go for capital B, little b, capital C, little c. Angles on the top, remember. So, sine 22 over 5, doesn't matter which way around you put these, is equal to sine theta over 9.3. This time, sine theta is on the right, doesn't make any difference. We're going to move the 9.3 over, change it to a times. So 9.3 times sine 22 all over 5. Now that comes out as 0 0.696. Don't panic, you haven't gone wrong. Remember that last step to get theta on its own, because at the minute sine theta equals 0 0.696 is to do sine minus 1. Sorry, it's my little boy in the background. Sine minus 1 of 0 0.696, and you should get 28, sorry, 44.17. Let's rub that out. 44.17. degrees. You should find another missing angle. Okay. Now there's one more there. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at this one before I do it, now's a good time to pause. And then once you've done it, press play. Okay. Let's label our sides. We'll have A, A, B, and B. Angles on the top. I'm going to go for the 54 first. So 54 over 6.4 is equal to sine theta over 3.8. Remember, it's theta that we want to be on its own. So we're going to need to move the 3.8. Let's change color. The 3.8 needs to move. 3.8 times sine 54 over 6.4. Now, you should get a naught point because we haven't finished yet. So 0 0.480 I've got. Then you need to do sine minus 1 of 0 0.480 dot 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 dot. And that comes out as final answer for this one, 28.71 degrees. Okay, so just to sum up then, and you'll need to make sure you get this in your books. If you're finding a missing side with the sine rule, you use it the way round. It's given to you in the exam with sides on the top and angles on the bottom. If you're finding a missing angle, you put the angles on the top and the sides on the bottom. You flip it upside down. Whatever you're missing needs to be on the top. That makes the rearranging much easier. Okay. And the one thing you have to do if you're finding an angle that you don't do if you find the side, you will have to do sine minus one at the end when you're finding an angle. Okay. So hopefully that's made sense. I'll put some questions to go with the lesson and you can have a go at on your own.